I can notice that um, after glucose re rise in, um, in the blood, oh, the smiles are, are different and the faces look much more fresh. Yeah, so um, actually this is the second topic I'm going to discuss with you. And by the way, this is my fourth time to participate in this uh, meeting. And honestly, I like this meeting a lot because the group is very active. The standard of discussion is really high. So thank you very much and please keep going on. It's okay. So just consider it. No, just consider it an open discussion. Don't take it as one way direction of a talk. Okay. Um, this talk will be about the target controlled inhalational volatile anesthetics that all of you saw just before the lunch break and the uh, um, uh, uh, simulation center, simulation place. So I'm going to talk in this topic about two things. Automation for ventilation and automation for target controlled inhalation and anesthesia. I think it's going to be much easier now after the workshop that was conducted by the Drugger team. Our aim is just to discuss the introduction, TCIA and smart ventilation control. This is the first trial of flying by human beings, um, by Wright brothers. And this was their model of the flight. As you can see, it's very simple, not complicated, nothing there. They just do it by themselves, very simple. And this is the model that we're having at the moment. You can compare the difference. Of course, all of these are automation. This is the machine that we used around 30 years ago. Personally, I worked with it a lot. It is uh, the Manly machine. Then we went for this machine, the Benlon. And as the era and the automation and the technology develops, these are the type of machines that we are having now. So the era is just getting better. If you will remember 15, 20 years ago, if anyone will say for you, you will be in the middle of the sea and you can connect to the internet and communicate with anyone in the world, you are going to say, what's this craziness? And it's happening now. To do ultrasound 30 years ago, you need to send the patient for the machine, which is as big as that. But now there are booked ultrasound. You can do it at any time, at any moment, and you can keep it in your hand. And I believe very soon they will invent something like a pen. Just the ultrasound will be as small as this. Einstein said ultimate automation will make our modern industry or primitive and outstanding uh, as the Stone Age man looks to us today. And I believe that this is what is happening. type of automation. Actually, we are having open control loop in which a system at which the output has no control in the input. For example, in the ventilation, the input will be driving pressure, the ventilation setting, the gas flow, it will go to the patient, it will give output, which is the airway pressure and entitled volatile anesthetic. But there is no any control of the output to the input. And this is called open loop control. While the closed control loop, the output in closed control loop has a role in modifying the input by the feedback signals at either positive or negative feedback. In the closed control loop, we are having three types, tactile, in which the operator will just set a fixed target and strategic in which there is a dynamic target and intelligent in which we don't need operator at all. Thanks God that the old machines are strategic. It's not uh, intelligent. Today in Helician Anesthesia practice, we are just selecting the agent, select the concentration, select the fresh gas flow, adjust the ventilator setting, give all this input to the machine, and the machine will 
drive to the patient by vaporizers and ventilator will deliver the settings. The patient will give us entitled volatile anesthetic that will be displayed on the machine and then the operator will analyze this output and he will make a decision. So he is the one who is controlling and setting a strategy while the machine is just delivering and measuring. But there is no impact of output on the input except through the operator. And this is no loop. Tomorrow inhalation and anesthesia that we are aiming to target, select the agent, select the entitled volatile anesthetic that you need, select the maximum inspiratory volatile anesthetic that the machine can deliver, which is the maximum allowable, and select your FiO2. And the machine will do it. Then it will deliver this for the patient, and the patient will give us the output, which is the entire volatile anesthetic, and the machine will react to this and keep the cycle. So it is delivering, measuring and display, taking decision while the operator is just controlling, modifying the strategy. And this is what is called closed loop control. We can do this by target controlled inhalation and anesthesia. But just what are the benefits? Why, why we need it? Target controlled inhalation and anesthesia. It's a strategic closed control loop automation of low flow anesthesia. It is a system containing both hardware and software. And we will know what's the value of the hardware and what the software is doing. The machine adjusts automatically the anesthetic agent concentration to achieve the desired target level set by the user. So all what we will need to do is just adjust the entitled volatile anesthetic that we need and let the machine do it automatically. We don't need just to play and to move and to take care and to be cautious and to adjust the fresh gas flow to increase it or to decrease it. All what I will do is just, I will set what I need and I will ask the machine to do it. Why need the hardware component? The constant fresh gas flow rate in circuit breathing system, it can't cope with sudden increase, decrease in uh, uh, volatile anesthetic need. And this was a matter of discussion with Dr. Uh, Fawaz during the, the, the course. And he expressed for us that he's having some negative feedback. Actually, we couldn't find the reason. But um, the advantage of this machine, honestly, that it can compensate for any sudden change during the automatic gas control. The verborizer should be electronically controlled. And because of this, we don't have the target controlled anesthesia, target controlled inhalation anesthesia in Berzeus or in any kind of machine that is having a mechanical type of vaporizer. The vaporizer should be directly injecting into the breathing system. I'm not saying that it is the best vaporizer in the world. Each vaporizer is having its own advantage and disadvantage. Electronical driven can inject directly to the circuit. It can achieve your target very rapidly. It will make your life easier. Mechanical vaporizers are lifelong vaporizers. It is very hard worker. It's in the market for the last 30 years. We are too much expert about it. So it's your decision, what you want. Uh, we are not supporting using one thing over other. But if I have a luxury that the machine will do the job and I will have an extra time to take care about the patient. Why I should not use it? Why I should not try it? And finally, electronical mixing volatile anesthetic with other gas. So component needed to achieve uh, TCIA electronically driven gas blender, direct injector for volatile by Diva vaporizers, um, and we need to monitor very accurately very closely the gas. And because of this, while we are using the automatic gas control, we need to have second gas analyzer. We don't depend on one gas analyzer because we will reach a very critical level of fresh gas flow. And this is what we need to have 
And this is why we need to have second gas analyzer. Ensure circle flow, flow inside the circle system by adding a turbine in the inspiratory side. And as we mentioned, um, and as our team of Dreger mentioned during the uh, symposium, um, it's the only machine having turbine. It's the only anesthesia machine having turbine um, in Dreger. And it can supply up to 250 liter per minute. It's controlled automatically by 180. We never reach this limit. We don't need this limit. It's just as an idea like, I have Ferrari. It can reach the speed of 360. But I will never go with the 360. The maximum I will drive with 140, 160. But it's an option available. It can give me all the advantages of ICU ventilator. The Diva Vaporizer. And this was the issue of discussion again. The difference between the, it worked only, of course, for CVDIS and ISO. The advantage of it over the normal vaporizer that the fresh gas flow for the old vaporizers should pass, then go to the circuit. But with the Diva, they are parallel. They are totally independent. This is the first um, gas analyzer. And this is the second analyzer to detect any kind of failure or leakage in the circuit. And of course, this is the turbine that will keep the circle, the, the flow in the circle, even with very low flow. There is any benefit of using this target controlled inhalational anesthesia? Yes, of course. And it can be supported by evidence. It will cost saving due conservation of volatile anesthetics, even if it will be compared to manual, minimal flow anesthesia. Lower environmental emission due to conservation. Again, we are taking care about our environment. Fewer intervention with the anesthesia machine. So giving the anesthetist chance to do another work, insertion of a line, insertion of uh, nasogastric tube, taking care about anything else, just changing the drug wherever he would like to do. And volatile anesthesia delivery optimization, wider participation in low flow anesthesia. Um, if I am afraid to go for minimal flow anesthesia manually, and sometimes I'm afraid to do it, I'm not afraid to do it just automatically. Cost efficacy of target controlled inhalational anesthesia, total cost in comparison between the two groups showed not too much reduction, but it was significantly, uh, statistically significant. And this is Egyptian Journal of Anesthesia. It was done in 2014. Sivofluorine is as safe as this fluorine when delivered by auto control mode of Zeus machine. Decreased anesthesia consumption and cost. And finally, this is evaluation of target controlled inhalation anesthesia in pediatric using newly introduced Zeus anesthesia workstation. And the conclusion that the target controlled inhalation anesthesia using the auto control mode of Zeus apparatus allow a very fast and reliable induction of sevoflurane in pediatric. And this was the point of discussion with Dr. Fawaz that uh, can we use it? Yes, we can use it. And it will compensate very fastly. And because of this, we were just confused about Dr. Fawaz, although that we respect his point of view, but we couldn't find a scientific reason for this from our point of view. I finished the first part. Uh, it's, it's just continuity of uh, the fresh gas flow, minimal gas flow, low flow anesthesia, and metabolic flow anesthesia. Honestly, with the automatic target control, with the target controlled inhalation anesthesia, reaching the metabolic gas flow, uh, metabolic anesthesia is very easy. I'm not telling you you have to do it, but please consider at least the low flow anesthesia. Around one liter, one and a half liter, it's accepted. With the machine after two hours, really it will reach 0.3 and 0.4. After around one and a half hour to two hours, we will see this number frequently. Now we will talk about the smart ventilation control. Again, the same concept. Uh, actually, I was supposed to start with the ventilation, then to go for the target controlled inhalation anesthesia. But I'm just, it doesn't make a big difference because both are almost the same concept. Both are depending on the idea of closed loop 
control. Uh, our aim of ventilation, and of course, Dr. Massimo is here, and he is the pioneer of ventilation, and he will discuss it in details. Our aim of ventilation is as simple as that. Give enough oxygen, remove CO2, regain spontaneous breathing. It's very simple, Dr. Massimo. Is it right? <laughs> um, so this is Dr. X, and this is the patient Y, and she's going to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And this is the machine, whatever the ventilator he's having, an anthesia machine. So let us just discuss what we're going to do. For laparoscopic reduction, I would think I need to paralyze the patient. I will not, of course, keep the patient spontaneous in laparoscopic surgery. Okay, I will select auto flow. I will set the tidal volume, 470 respiratory rate. For me, it seems fine for such a size patient. Then the end-tidal CO2 will be displayed on the monitor, and I will discover that it is 44. So what I have to do? Should I increase the rate, or should I increase the tidal volume? What do you do? Rate. Or volume? Or rate? <laughs> this is the issue. Of course, uh, we will keep in mind all the time the protective lung strategy that Dr. Massimo talked about it. But we have both options. Is it right? And as an expert in anesthesia, all of you is expert in anesthesia, okay, um, you will make your decision depending on your own experience. Is it right? Okay, just imagine if we will take the experience of all of you with all your opinion, with all your clinical judgment, with all what you are going to do, and we will put it in a processor until this processor, please, in this situation, behave like our expert doctors. Is it going to be better? Is it a fine? Is it an accepted for you? I know for Dr. Fawaz from his doc, it's not fine with him. <laughs> this is actually what we did. Let us see. So I just increased the rate. Now, it is still after increasing the rate 43. I want to lower it lower. What I have to do? Should I again decrease the rate or should I increase the tidal volume? Anyhow, this is a scenario. It can happen with any of us. At the end of the surgery, now the patient, I would like to return her spontaneous breathing. So let us think what I will do. I will use pressure support. What parameter do I have to use? What are the pressure support? What are the respiratory backup? What are the delta pressure? Again, it will depend on my clinical experience, my personal experience. It differs from person to person. Is it right? So we can replace all of this because this is what we are doing actually today. I'm selecting the mood, I'm selecting the tidal volume, respiratory rate, giving it to the machine. Ventilator will deliver the settings. Again, the patient will give us in tidal CO2, the tidal vo uh, 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 airway pressure, the machine will display it. I will think about it. I will control the set. I will the set the strategy and the machine will deliver and measure only. The same concept, no closed loop. We can do this now. Set target, just choose tidal volume per kg, level of target. You can just tell the machine, I want you to deliver per kg range of tidal volume. And tidal CO2, again, I want range of entitled C2. Choose your beep. Tell the machine what is the pressure maximum that you want. The machine will deliver it to the patient. It will measure the entitled CO2. It will measure the pressure air airway. It will measure the flow. It will measure the uh, volatile anesthetic. And it will take a decision by changing the pressure support, pressure control, it will manage the respiratory rate instead of you. This is what's called smart ventilation control. Sorry. So it's a system designed to deliver knowledge-based strategic closed control loop automation of minute ventilation. Knowledge-based means that the stored algorithms are based on data ex extracted from experts, from all of you. 
behavior in specific situation. Smart ventilation control operate as pressure controlled or pressure support mode. Let us see more about this mode. So how it works. The operator will set range of tidal volume. It can be by default from six to eight or from four to nine. Ventilation, or he will also set range of entitled CO2. Of course, he can change it, he can modify it. But he will, the default is depending on what is your target of ventilation. We are having four targets. I would like to suppress the patient ventilation totally, or I would like to augment the patient to spontaneous breathing, or I will just allow the patient to, split, uh, to, to breathe spontaneously, but I, would I don't want to augment it, or I would like to go for extubation. I would like the patient to go 100% for spontaneous ventilation. This is what's called my target. And depending on the target, the machine will give me a default setting that I can change it. And then, and then I will set the ventilation goal here, the pressure max and the beep, and I will tell the machine, please do the job. So this is the target, anesthesia input ventilation goal and target range, smart ventilation control will, get, will set the respiratory rate and the kind of pressure support or pressure control, and it will adjust depending on the pressure, the tidal volume that will go to the patient, and from the patient output will give us the tidal volume and the end tidal CO2, and we will keep the circle while I'm watching. Here is just an example. I already set for the patient the entitled CO2 that I want, and I set for the patient the uh, airway tidal volume per kg. Suddenly, the entitled CO2 dropped below the range of target. It here became roughly 32, while my lower level is 34. The machine will check and the machine will find that the tidal volume within range. So it will act directly by reducing the respiratory rate from nine to eight. Here are the goals of our ventilation. The first is controlled ventilation. It's a, a acceptable if no spontaneous breathing is desired. This is the default setting the machine will give me. It is old word pressure controlled by BAP augmented in which I will allow the patient to sp breathe spontaneously, but I, would, I don't want to encourage his spontaneous breathing. This is the default measurement. It is equivalent to synchronized pressure control with pressure support. Encourage spontaneous breathing. Automatically, you can see that the entire CO2 default setting is higher, and this is equivalent to pressure support. And finally, prepare patient for extubation. I want the patient to just be ready for 100% spontaneous breathing. And this is equivalent to pressure support or manual spontaneous breathing. Smart ventilation control. Let us just imagine that at the beginning, I need the patient to be 100% controlled. During the operation, I can change between controlled, augmented, or encourages spontaneous breathing depending on the type of the surgery. I'm inserting a laryngeal mask or I'm inserting tube. It's a long surgery. I need muscle relaxation. I don't need, it depends on all of these factors. And at the end, I will tell the machine, just prepare for extubation. So I'm taking the patient with this, uh, 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 smart, uh, with this uh, mood of ventilation from intubation till extubation. This is just a comparison between the smart ventilation control and what we are practicing at the moment in three kinds of surgery, laparoscopic surgery, endoscopic, uh, lower GIT endoscopy with laryngeal mask and surgery without spontaneous breathing. So for endoscopic surgery, Dr. Sabri, would you prefer the patient to be relaxed or endoscopic? It's just a lower endoscopy. Not necessary. Not necessary. Is it right? So would you encourage him to breathe spontaneously? Absolutely. Perfect. So all of us are in the same way. In laparoscopic surgery, I need at the beginning, if we will use the normal method, I will need to suppress the patient's spontaneous breathing. So I will use pressure control, then pressure support. At the end of the surgery for the emergence, I will use manual spontaneous CPAP. Here, I will enforce a spontaneous breathing 
many are spontaneous because I didn't give here muscle relaxant. And here, I don't want at all spontaneous breathing. This is what we are doing currently. And this is what we can do with the smart ventilation control. I would just choose smart ventilation control, and I will tell him, please, I, my, my, my target is controlled ventilation. At the end of the surgery, I can tell him augmented or prepare for extubation. Here, I would just in, um, choose encourage spontaneous breathing, and it will allow the patient to breathe. And I'm just assisting him by pressure support. Here, I will tell the machine controlled, finally prepare for extubation. There are extra settings after. These are the settings that we are adjusting normally. The ventilation goal, after putting the demographic data of the patient, the target range, there are different target range for each ventilation at, as we mentioned. These are the extra setting, it's not important at the moment. And this is the benefit. Just imagine, if I have a patient who is 100% controlled and I would like to return 100% this patient spontaneous breathing, what we are doing now is almost seven to eight steps. At the beginning, I will switch the synchronized on and pressure control, then adjust the trigger sensitivity, reduce mandatory frequency, switch to pressure support, set apnea frequency, adjust pressure support level, reduce step the pressure support. I'm doing this for the patient. If I would like to return his spontaneous breathing while he's on the ventilator, if I am not taking him manually, as a lot of us doing. With the Zeus, I can do it just with one step. With the smart ventilation control, we can do it just with one step. This is the Avaz study. The result will be ready by, it's just uh, automatic control of mechanical ventilation during general anesthesia. It's started from the beginning of 2016. It will be finished by roughly May 2017. It's under study. Of course, I will know that a lot of our doctors will just tell me, uh, so we don't need the anesthesia doctor. And my answer is as simple as that. Of course, we can't run anything in the operation theater without the anesthesia doctor. It's just a tool, giving the doctor an advantage and time to take care about the patient. And he can switch this ventilation control mood in a second and return to whatever he wants at any moment. It's just as simple as we add for the car instead of normal gear, automatic gear. It doesn't mean that we don't need a driver. We add the cruise control. It doesn't mean that we don't need a driver. It, we add the program of autopilot. It doesn't mean that we don't need a pilot. It will just help me, giving me more time. This is my opinion. Of course, I will hear this from you because it came to my mind also. It's not applicable for every patient. It will work for the majority of normal patients. So, I have nothing now, but with this I will have 70, 80, 90 percent of my patient, I can control them automatically. Thank you very much. That's all.